<laughs> you ready? I will Chocolate Galera. All right. Well, let me thank everyone uh, for your service, first of all, uh, to our country, and then for joining us today at this Veterans Roundtable meeting that we're having. Um, and it's always great to be in person because, you know, I, I start out with that whenever we have anything since, uh, you know, COVID, because there's been so many times over the last two years when we couldn't do things in person. So I'm, I'm always happy to be in person and also looking forward to Memorial Day in-person events. We mentioned the parades, which many of which are being held now for the first time in the last two years or so. So I wanted to start out by having everybody introduce themselves, if they would, just go around. Uh, I got my list, but I'll let you introduce yourself. So we'll just start on the left here. Sure. Good afternoon. My name is Ann Treadway. I'm the director of the Office of Veteran and Military Programs and Services for Rutgers University. I served for five years in the United States Army, deployed twice to Iraq in 2003 and 2005, and I used the GI Bill to go back to college and, and also get a graduate degree. Great. I'm Joe Bucko. I uh, work for the New Jersey Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. I'm the uh, North Jersey Supervisor for our Veteran Service Offices. I'm uh, a nuclear Navy veteran. I was on a USS Tenosa Best Attack nuclear submarine from 73 to 77 and uh, it had the distinction of being a Thresher sister ship. Uh, after I had left the Navy, I was going to Trenton State and was persuaded to join the National Guard. And it was very helpful to me. I mean, I was going to school on the uh, old Vietnam era GI Bill. Anybody go to school on that? We got $311 a month to go to school. And uh, that was it. <laughs> so I needed some extra money, so I joined the Guard. Ended up going to work for the Guard after I graduated. and. Uh, Worked for him full time, uh, went into the AGR program, retired in 2000 as a lieutenant colonel, and been working with the mob ever ever since uh, as the uh, state supervisor. Great. Yeah. First as a VSO, then the state supervisor. Thank you, Joe. So, where'd Matt go? I don't know. So, this is Jake Freed. He deals with veterans' issues out of our DC office. He's based in DC, but he is from Metuchen, and it was his idea to have this event today. Uh, Larry Bishop, American Legion, Army veteran of Vietnam era. I served about every office you can so far in the American Legion. Uh, 40 years of Legion, still going strong, serving veterans. Well, thank you. Great. Joe Gujek, currently uh, uh, District 8 Commander of the uh, BFW, which is Middlesex County, uh, Vietnam uh, veteran with the 25th Division in, in Vietnam. Uh, made the rank of staff sergeant and lived through it. And uh, here I am, about 40 years in the BFW. Well, thank you. Samantha Flags, Public and Government Affairs of Philadelphia. So you're with the Freehold, I mean, <laughs> with the Commissioner. <laughs> I keep saying Freehold, did Ron, I'm sorry. Um, Ron? Ron Rios, Middlesex County Commissioner Director. All right, thanks for being here. Bob Peel, Edison Township, Mayor Joshi's Chief of Staff. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. All right, terrific. Thanks, Bob. Francisco Cortez, President of the New Jersey State Veterans Chamber of Commerce, uh, proud U.S. Army veteran. I uh, was a tank commander at the uh, National Training Center. Great, thank you. Joel Palavera, I'm the commander for Post 317. Uh, served in the Navy four years. Deployed to, to the Persian Gulf and then off the coast of Korea on board the USS Ronald Reagan. Uh, and now I'm actually a police officer with Port Authority. Oh, okay. And um, trying to help out as much, as much as I can. Well, thank you. And we are at VFW Post 3117 here today. Jay Boxwell, the current uh, Department of New Jersey DSW Senior Vice Commander, the uh, incoming commander, should traditional true, um, two weeks. Uh, Navy veteran, Navy corpsman, uh, spent uh, three and a half years with Marine Force Recon, Second Recon, and Honduras and Nicaragua, Libya in 86, um, and then spent the rest of my time on a battleship uh, in the Middle East, Persian Gulf, and got out. Well, thank you. And I'm Brad Christensen. I'm the newest uh, supervisor for New Jersey Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. Uh, I'm a civilian, so I'm just very fortunate to be working for veterans, and thanks to everybody in the room for your service. All right, thanks so much. We got everybody, right? All right, so let me just make a few remarks about 
what we've been doing in Congress, and then I'll ask um, the director to say a few words. And I'm going to try not to be too long. They always give me these long statements, but I'll try to summarize it as best I can. Um, the um, This morning, I sent a letter. Do they have that? Uh, or this morning, I sent a letter to Secretary McDonough, you know, who's the head of the U.S. Department of Education, concerning the student GI benefits. And again, this is something that Jake has worked on quite a bit. And uh, there have been two recent studies, and again, I'm, you may all know this, but you know, I'll go through it. Two recent studies that demonstrated that our student veterans are facing serious financial challenges. Um, you know, this is with regard to the adequacy, if you will, uh, of the GI benefits. And one report by Pew Charitable Trust found that over a quarter of student veterans have taken out student loans despite having uh, GI benefits. And it also showed that over half of those student veterans are taking the loans to cover basic living expenses. And it's this, the letter specifically asks the VA for more information on how widespread financial hardship and loan debt are among student veteran population and what's the root cause. Um, they're also uh, asking the department to ter determine how much of this debt is held by private, what I call predatory lenders, and encouraging the VA to do an awareness campaign to help inform veterans of all their benefits. So, you know, we don't know. I mean, when we passed this, we thought that it would be adequate, right, to cover not only tuition, but also living expenses. It may be that it is inadequate. It may be that uh, a lot of the veterans don't know and aren't getting the full benefits. So, and you obviously can talk about that if you want. Uh, but the, the idea is to find out, right, to see whether this needs to be more generous, whether it just needs to have more awareness, um, and that's the idea. Um, then the second thing I want to mention is the, our legislation called the Homeless Veterans Credit Act. And again, this is uh, an idea that came from Jake, and he actually drafted the, the legislation. He was probably getting mad because I'm telling you that, but I am anyway. And basically what we know is there 37,000. Now, you said I'm not supposed to use the term homeless veterans. No, no, no. Homeless it's okay? Homeless veterans is better. We, we don't like to use the term of housing unstable. Veterans. Oh, okay, okay. 37,000 homeless veterans in the U.S. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, just as the military says, we, you know, pledges to leave no one behind, we don't want to leave any veterans behind when they return home. Now, I know that I'm going to say, uh, Ron, that... Um, Ron has been outstanding in try to prevent, trying to prevent homeless veterans, and I believe that at one, t I don't know if it's still true, you'll have to tell us, that at one time, due to your efforts, there were no homeless veterans in Middlesex County because of what you had accomplished. Maybe, and well, maybe you can comment on that. If I may. Yeah, please. sure, sit down. Please. Uh, back when President Obama was in office in his second term, the first lady, first of all, let me say thank you to all the veterans for your service to our country. It's greatly appreciated. I, I have a great admiration for our veterans because what you all did is amazing. But when uh, she was still first lady, she created a uh, mayor's challenge. And it was challenging any elected official, basically, to end homelessness in, for veterans in their communities. You know, I'm always, I'm, a, I'm always up for a challenge. So I asked our staff, why can't we do this? Why can't we engage in the process and find out what the criteria was for that? Uh, you know, we don't care about the accolades. We want to get people that are off the streets and, and, and in a living place. So there was certain criteria that we had to meet. We had to have different services to provide for the homeless vets and at least uh, reach out to them and, and go out in the communities and try to reach out to them and let them know that, listen, this is an A program, B program, whatever the case may be. And we met that criteria and we did what we had to do and we were recognized for that. And, and uh, Michelle Obama invited us to the White House uh, for that recognition. We weren't the only one community or county in, in the nation to accomplish that, but we had programs and services to and homelessness, and, and that's how we got that accolade. 
which is, you know. Uh, I thought it was very great, significant, yeah. Yeah, we have great staff that really has a passion. And I'm sure that those of you that work with our county uh, veteran services programs, you know that we have dedicated staff and uh, veterans that are employed there. No, I appreciate that. And I want you to say a few more words, too. But I did particularly wanted to mention that. Um, so according to the Veterans Administration, um, credit and financial, this goes back to the bill that I've sponsored that Jake worked on. Credit, but according to the VA, credit and financial counseling continues to be a top 10 unmet need for the homeless veterans community. So the, the theory behind this bill is that a lot of veterans who are homeless you know, don't know how to handle their finances. I mean, some of them have practically no money, but that that's a concern. So what the bill does, it directs the VA to conduct a study on the credit and financial counseling services offered to homeless veterans and any kind of barriers to those services. We can talk to, about, you know, what they have or whether you think they have anything. Uh, you know, they obviously have something. But the goal of the bill is to take a look at the financial and credit counseling services that are offered uh, through the uh, Supportive Service or Veterans Families Program uh, and to obviously get veterans into housing so they're no longer homeless. You know, I understand this is only a first step, but it's something that we're trying to do. And it passed the House. The Senate Veterans Affairs Committee uh, chair says they're going to move it in the Senate, so hopefully it'll be on the President's desk. So we wanted to mention that specifically. But I also wanted to give a little update on what else Congress is doing. I wanted to start by mentioning, well, I'm not going to speak much longer, but I think the most important thing I wanted to mention was the American Rescue Plan. Now, that was the bill, that was the first sort of comprehensive bill that Congress passed in this session, you know, last year, the first year when Biden was president. And it was primarily addressed to the COVID crisis because remember, a year ago today, or this is even longer, right? This would have been uh, February of 2021. The, um, the COVID crisis was, was at its height, right? So most of the money and activities that were involved at that were addressed to COVID, right? And in that bill, there was $13.5 billion in funding for healthcare services and $400 million for rapid retaining, retraining programs for veterans who were out of work because of COVID. So even though it was veterans, a lot of this was oriented towards COVID, right? And then um, there was another $750 million for state-run veterans homes. Um, construction as well as grants to those homes. Um, but I just wanted to mention that. Look, I, I, I don't want to um, go into all these things. There is one I do want to mention, or two more that I do want to mention. That is that uh, recently, the, the dealing with the um, burn pits, that was, what, about a month ago? Yeah, it passed the House. It passed the House. So this was the, the PACT Act, which you probably heard of, that deals with burn pits. Um, in this, this is because of toxic exposure of veterans. Was it strictly um, Iraq and Afghanistan, or it goes further back? Uh, well, a lot of the previous war times had certain like service connected. Um, so it might so even it relate to Vietnam Iraq. and yeah. others. Not well, so they, much. They, had, they have certain like Asian orange. And, like, they yeah, yeah. So this was primarily like, for so this was primarily for Iraq and Iraq Afghanistan. And but that, um, so the Senate has reached an agreement for that. So we expect that um, we will have a, that pass in the next the few weeks. The Senate will, will pass a bill, send it back to the House. And, and the then the send it to the President. So, hope, so I wanted to mention that. And also the House passed the Bipartisan EVEST Act. Uh, and that automatically enrolls eligible returning veterans into the VA health system, which you might say, well, is, is that important? It is, because a lot of people don't even know they never enrolled, right? And also, we passed a uh, GI Parity Act that ensures that every day spent in uniform for our National Guardsmen and women, including training days, counts towards the GI Bill benefits. So that's something new, too. But that, again, has to pass the Senate, right? Okay. So um, that's all I wanted to talk about. But if, if I could just ask you, Ron, to say a little more because I know that the county has done such, you know, it's really great on veterans, and particularly every time I go to uh, Middlesex College, uh, there's a lot going on there with the veterans groups and what's done. You want to just yeah. talk a little bit about it? Go ahead. I'm going to move over here.
Yeah. Like that. I don't really want to be little people.